our top headline, Minoru Suzuki. He's actually going to be making his uh, impact debut on October 24th and 25th at Samstown for the TV tapings there after Bound for Glory. He will not be at Bound for Glory, though, because he is going to be doing a Game Changer wrestling show that same night. I believe it's in L.A. So he will not be at Bound for Glory, but he will be in Las Vegas the next few days. He uh, he worked with Brian, uh, Brian Danielson tonight on AEW. I have not watched that yet, so no spoilers, please. I, I get the feeling I know who won, but I still want to watch it. Um, ditto, ditto. Yeah, so, uh, but Minoru Suzuki, man, one of the all-time great legends in uh, Japanese wrestling history and Japanese MMA history, making his Impact debut. I, I honestly didn't think that Impact was going to land this guy uh, while he was in the States because he was doing so much with uh, AEW and GCW. I never thought that Impact was going to get him, but here he is. He's, he's going to make his debut. This just uh, says more to the strengthening relationship of this company and New Japan. I mean, mm-hmm. things, are, things are going well. So I'm, I'm happy about this, man. Uh, who do you book Suzuki against? If you're, yeah. if you're Scott Tamore, who do you book him with? Well, you stole my question to you, sir. But since you oh. asked me first, I will, I will answer who I think. And I, you know, I think the obvious is Joe Doring and Eddie Edwards. I think those are the two obvious ones. And you know how Scott Demore is like, Hey, you guys wrestled in Japan. So you should wrestle Suzuki. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, those two guys, I did have an off the wall idea on Twitter. And uh, because I'm an old school MMA fan, I thought it would be kind of fun to see Ken Shamrock get in there with them. Uh, Shamrock is uh, close to Vegas. He could get there and he's uh, an impact hall of famer and was on, you know, impact TV earlier this year. I, I think that would be kind of cool too. So, uh, you know, what are those three guys? I like the Shamrock thing because the Pancrase history, they're both Pancrase guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would be very happy with that. My thought was Eddie Edwards too, also because I know the way Scott Demore books. Yeah. Um, that being said, I really want to see Josh Alexander versus Minoru Suzuki. I don't think we'll get that, but that's what I want to see. Yeah, that's what I want to see too. But I also, um, you know, Suzuki has been taking a lot of L's in the States and Suzuki is almost bulletproof okay. in this point where he can do that. Um, I, I'd like to see him get a win or two in impact, even though he's only going to be there for two days. I like to see him get a win or two and then maybe challenge for the title or just have a big match against a uh, Doring or Edwards or somebody like that. Here's the big Minoru Suzuki secret. And again, I co-host a, po- a Japanese wrestling podcast on this network. High tension. Um, Suzuki takes a lot of L's in new Japan too. Mm-hmm. Like he's, he is bulletproof. Right in this country, and you know, like he will take a fair share of wins over, and he beats the shit out of young boys when they come down with ranks. So it's part of the charm. But um, yeah, he's he is, he's great. I think he had a, I heard he had a great match tonight with Brian Danielson. I haven't watched it yet. I'm very much looking forward to watching it as well. Uh, I like this whole thing. I think this is very smart. Yeah, man, I think it's great. Uh, we have a new we have a new official signing, uh, Masha Slamovich who was at the knockouts knockdown this past Saturday night. And I'm going to, um, I, I didn't get a chance to do a podcast about it. Uh, I was going to try to do a solo one for the network, but I ended up not watching knockouts knockdown. It's like two or three days later um, after it aired. And I got to say, I know that you were there and you saw some pretty bad matches. And I know, I'm, I think I have an idea of which matches you saw because I agreed with those. What you didn't see was a lot of good matches um, and some quality competition, man. And one of those matches, and I felt like it was the best match of the night, was Masha Slamovich and Deanna Prazo. After the match was over, De- uh, Gail Cam offered her a contract that didn't air on the Knockouts Knockdown show, but they did air it on Twitter. They they posted the clip of it and they announced her her signing. And uh, she's a 23 year old independent sensation, been around for five years, has some uh, training overseas with uh, with uh, oh gosh, I can't remember her name, but um, uh, I think she was training there in stardom, whoever was training over there. Um, she's got some really good training. She's, uh, she's a pretty badass chick, man. And she's a good signing for impact. Yeah. I like this. I didn't realize she was only 23. That's yeah. really great. Um, she's been taking up a lot and I take that's the wrong term. She's been getting a lot of uh, very positive buzz on the old Twitter as of late. So no, I did not see this. Um, as I revealed on this pod, on this podcast a few weeks ago, when impact is so shot out of order, it's probably just working in when people can come in and when they can't and, and whatnot. So um, when I was there, they only shot a portion of the knockouts, knockdown stuff. And I had to get back to my hotel. And I think you could figure out what match made me walk out of the building. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. So it was Brandy Loren versus, that would be the match. Yeah, versus Mercedes Martinez. The funny thing is, okay, the match was not good, but it was also only two minutes. So you okay. got out of you got it out of there in a hurry because Which, you could if you blinked and that thing was over. 
when she came when she came out there i i think i literally messaged you as i'm like i gotta get out of here <laughs> yeah you did <laughs> yeah yeah um so I, I so i don't know which matches were taped on which night but um so i'm gonna i'm gonna recommend the show to our audience i actually talked to justin earlier and uh and we we were he was just read my column and uh and commenting on it and i, I gave him a couple matches to watch and i said look you know, for Knockouts Knockdown, up your alley, I think the only match that you you would probably appreciate because of the, his love for Japanese wrestling would be Perrazzo and uh, Masha Slamovich. So I'm recommending that match to our audience. Uh, Monsters Ball. Um, they It was a four-way Monsters Ball match with Kimberly, Jordan Grace, Alicia Edwards, and Savannah Evans. They Those ladies just tore the house down. They they beat the shit out of each other. Kimberly bled a gusher. So like she did, got her face in a barbed wire and was bleeding all over the place. Um, Alicia Edwards was looking at 10 Savannah Evans. Um, looks like she could be a, a big star for them in the future. Like her. Yeah. She's, she's a total beast, man. Um, and then there was another match, uh, Rachel Ellering and lady frost. I thought was, had, had themselves a decent match. I did watch that one. I did like it. That was yeah. the, that was the, and I, again, I think I was messaging you stuff when the matches, when I was there and I said, this was pretty good. I like lady frost. I, if they signed her and if, if not, mm -mm. why not? Yeah. So no, they, they have not signed her. Um, I don't know what the holdup is. Uh, but so it's like, how many people do you sign at once? Right. But because they also, cause it looks like they got Mercedes Martinez. They haven't announced that she signed, but according to Meltzer, she's in for the long haul. So I, I don't know what that means. If she's on a per date deal or what they signed Masha Slamovich to like a legitimate deal. They just brought in uh, Savannah Evans. And so I think lady frost should be like the next person that they sign. I think that she's impressive and she could be somebody for them as a heel, but somebody that they could bring around a lot more. I, I'm a fan. I like her work. Um, she's a good athlete, you know, great look. Uh, I'd like to see some more like legit character work from her. Not just like, you know, cause the character work you do in the Indies is just different, right? Yeah. It's almost like uh like WWE 1995 stuff, right? Where the gimmick itself felt like is the character work. So I like to see what she can do in that respect a little bit. Um, but that being said, I, I did like her. I did like her match with Ellen Ring. I thought they were pretty good. So uh, I, I like to see her in. I like this. I like the Masha Slamovich thing. I think she could be. I think. I think we kind of like I said before. I think we need a little something new in this division. It seems like they're they're doing it. it. Seems like we're addressing some issues. So that's good. And I think the her signing is perfect into our next headline, um, or perfect for our next headline. We got a big new distribution deal from Impact Wrestling. Uh, they they signed a deal with uh, Global Extreme Sports Channel in Russia, uh, Russia and um, all the the uh, Commonwealth uh, independent states there. So we're talking the Ukraine and Moldova and all of those states over there and uh, all throughout Russia. Um, I don't know the exact number of homes that it's, this is going to be in, but this um, impact is playing this is a big deal um and masha slamovich uh the them holding off on the announcement of her signing and announcing it the day before they announced this russian tv deal i think you know makes sense to me i think that was on purpose so um because masha speaks russian fluently and she speaks english fluently and so that's kind of a good person to have and yeah. so now now they have this whole, whole new reach and this whole new part of the region they've never been there before they're gonna have russian commentary the whole thing um i kind of joke big new distribution deal uh I, you know our brother uh gerard bear down big bears fan big impact wrestling fan uh he he reached out to sean ross Sapp on his uh, q a segment for fightful select and uh and asked if this was the actual deal that len asper was tweeting about and he said no but he also said that uh, no one knows what he was tweeting about no one knows if there's a big new deal coming um but some something something could be brewing and then i heard from somebody else that you know that things are being worked out but nobody really knows what's going on with that whole thing however i don't want to downplay the russian deal like i i think people thought that i was like looking like looking at this deal like it was a negative it's not a negative anytime you get new clearances anywhere that's a good thing um it's not a game changer because it's, they're not you know it's not likely going to be bringing in a ton of money whenever uh whenever you're getting these uh you know these european countries and countries in asia and africa and yada 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 they're not paying a ton of money for this content because it's being produced in the united states and that production is already being paid for here so they get it on the cheap over there so um so unless they're actually paying a huge rights fee, it's not really going to change much of what we're seeing right now. So cool deal, not a game changer, but I do like the announcement. As someone who's watched Russian state television, and I spent, I did some stuff in Russia about a decade ago. This is a good thing. That being said, pro wrestling really isn't 
at all popular. And I'm not talking impact. I'm talking professional wrestling is not very popular in Russia. Right. Um, there had there is a there is a single I read an article about this. There's a single little indie group in Moscow and it's uh, it's not popular. It's super underground. It's again, it's people that are because again, you get to other countries. There's people that are fans of American culture. Mm-hmm. Right. This is that's the people who dig pro wrestling over there. So impact. I don't not even sure if WWE is on in Russia. I could. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is it's not super popular. Yeah. So um, this is going to be very, very interesting to me. Yeah. So, that being said, good for them. You want to yeah. you want to blow your global, global outreach. So cool. Yeah. I mean, and so for WWE, other than Ilya Dragunov, anytime they would get a Russian wrestler, they would make them play a stereotypical heel. So I think what I would like to see is Impact do the opposite and make the Russian be a hero if they're going mm-hmm. to extend into that market. And that's we're talking Masha Slamovich now. Do you bring in the ravishing Russian Lana? <laughs> Do you bring her into impact now that you got this big deal in Russia? Um, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I did joke that maybe she should come in and be Masha's manager, but uh <laughs> people shut can, that down quick. <laughs> can Masha cut a promo? I haven't heard. Uh, you know, I haven't heard her cut a promo, but she did do kind of a an out of character interview. Uh, after they announced her signing and just she was like crying talking about how this is such a big deal to her so um i she has charisma and that and that's cool um so i, I think she cut a little bit of a promo before her match on knockouts knockdown but it wasn't like a, anything long so you can't really gauge whether or not she's a good promo it was effective for what it was Perfect. and that that was another cool thing that they did at that show was like they had each of the wrestlers before their match cut little um little promos before the match um kind of in front of a green screen and they look cool it was kind of old school 80s style wrestling and i like love, that love it love it this is something that i'm glad we're doing because for far too long thanks to vince russo and a lot of what happened in this company early on mm-hmm. um wrestlers don't cut enough of their own words anymore and uh nwa and AEW were on the forefront really of letting guys just go back to old school promos right and I think that impact doing this is, is for the best because I still think I still think far too much of the TV show is very attitude era esque backstage segments and stuff like that. And I don't I don't like it. So the more of this, the better. Yeah, absolutely, man. 